Welcome to the video homework for topic 4.5, Aromaticity Effects on Acidity and Basicity. Before attempting the problems in this homework, I would recommend that you read Lesson 4.5 in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Tennyson, Hujiri, and Smith. One thing that influences the basicity of a compound is whether or not the lone pair on the nitrogen atom is involved in resonance or tied up in a pi system for aromaticity. So this question is asking us what type of orbital holds the lone pair on the nitrogen in each of these compounds. If we start with the first compound, we can see that the lone pair will be involved in resonance around the ring, and that lone pair is indeed needed for this molecule to attain its aromaticity. If we draw the resonance hybrid for this compound, we see that there is pi bonding character between each of the two carbon atoms, and there are pi bonds going to the nitrogen. The lone pair is needed to make the pi bond in the resonance contributors. So you will need your lone pair to be in a pi bonding type orbital, or you could say a p-type orbital. The second compound, pyridine, is also aromatic, but only the pi bonds are involved in the aromaticity, and the lone pair on the nitrogen will not be donated into the system. The hybridization on this nitrogen is sp2. So the sigma bonding pairs of electrons going to the carbons here and here will be sp2 hybridized type orbitals. And the lone pair on the nitrogen will also be in an sp2 hybrid orbital. In our final case with this carboxamide, you can draw a resonance contributor where you push the lone pair up onto the oxygen. That means that the resonance hybrid will look like this, and there is double bond character between the nitrogen and the carbon, and that indicates that the lone pair will be involved in contributing to that pi bond. So the lone pair will be in a pi type orbital or a p type orbital. So here we are asked to rank these four species in terms of basicity, one through four, with one being the strongest. To tackle that type of problem, we really should look at what type of product we would get upon protonation. So it took each of these species from the starting material at the top, react it with a proton, and the lone pair will be donated to the proton in each case to give you the product shown in this bottom row. Now, the most thermodynamically favorable reaction will occur for the strongest base. So let's consider the differences between these four compounds and how those influence the relative favorability of the reaction. First, if the lone pair is involved in resonance, and we can draw resonance structures here or here, but not here or here. If you're already donating the lone pair to a resonance system, you can't also take it and do a second thing with it, like give it to a proton, not very easily. So those two will be the two weakest bases. So we'll leave those aside for now. And we'll focus on these two, where the lone pairs are not tied up in resonance. So if we take a look at these two possibilities, possible products, we don't lose any aromaticity or any resonance stabilization in either case. The main difference between these two nitrogen atoms is that the nitrogen in pyridine is an sp2 hybridized nitrogen, whereas this is an sp3 hybridized nitrogen. Now, an sp2 hybridized atom is more electronegative, so it's harder to pull electrons away from a more electronegative sp2 hybridized nitrogen than it would be to pull electrons away from an sp3 hybridized nitrogen. And that means that this will be our strongest base. So we've identified our two strongest bases, the two that do not have their lone pairs tied up in resonance. Now let's go back and take a look at our first two compounds. Each of these lone pairs will be involved in resonance. However, the lone pair on parole is necessary for this compound to be aromatic. If we protonate it, you go from an aromatic species to a non-aromatic species. You lose a ton of stability that way. You don't lose the stability endowed by aromaticity when you protonate this nitrogen because although it's involved in resonance, it's not involved in making the compound aromatic. It's more difficult to remove a molecule's aromaticity and all that stability it endows than to remove a little bit of resonance stabilization. So this will be the weakest base, and this would be the third strongest among these species. Here's another way that this type of concept could be manifest in a question. You might have a compound where all these nitrogens are on the same molecule, and you place this in sort of a basic solution. The pH is slowly lowered, and you're going to figure out 
in what order will I protonate these different sites? And this question is really asking you to rank the relative basicity of each site. And we'll use the same procedure we used in the previous problem to solve this kind of problem. So this lone pair is necessary to make this ring aromatic to move those six electrons around. That's going to be the most difficult site to protonate. So that will be protonated third. Well, what about these other two? Neither of those will engage in resonance because you're moving this pi bond from this nitrogen, not its lone pair, as we discussed in our aromaticity homework set. So the main difference, as in our previous discussion, is that we have an sp2 hybridized nitrogen there and an sp3 hybridized here. An sp2 hybridized nitrogen is more electronegative, so it's harder to pull them away to give them to a proton. That's what you need to do to protonate it. So that's going to be protonated second only after our most basic site in the molecule, this sp3 hybridized nitrogen, gets protonated first. We might also be faced with a case where we have something like these pyridine derivatives where we have a lone pair that's not tied up in resonance, and that can be donated to a proton. And we're asked in this case to rank these derivatives 1 through 3 in terms of basicity, with 1 being the most basic. Most of the compounds are identical. This whole top part is just pyridine, and then we're changing the substituent from this amino to this nitro to just an H down here. And we'll have to consider how those different substituents influence the basicity of the nitrogen. So we want to take a look at the products that would be made after we protonate each of those pyridine nitrogens. And they're all pretty similar at the top. And we think about how the substituents would either stabilize or destabilize that positive charge. If you draw out the Lewis structure, for this nitro group, you'll see there's a formal charge of plus one on the nitrogen. And now you're trying to put a positive charge on the same molecule that already has a positive charge directly adjacent to the ring on which you're trying to place that plus charge. That's not going to be very favorable. You don't want to have these plus charge, plus charge repulsions in your molecule. That's going to be the least likely to happen. Now, in contrast, the fact that you can use this lone pair on this nitrogen to donate into the pi system of the ring for resonance will actually allow you to push electrons towards that positive charge. Pushing negatively charged electrons towards a positive site will help stabilize it. So that's going to be the most favorable thing to do, and that's going to be, therefore, our strongest base. This would be, of course, our third, and then by elimination we'd have our second strongest base. It's just the period and without any substituents. Our new understanding of aromaticity endowed stabilization can also help us figure out relative acid strengths. Now, so far in this homework, we've only talked about base strength. So here's a question where we have a bunch of hydrocarbons, and it's simply asking us which is the strongest acid. Again, you're going to have to consider that the strongest acid should have the most stable conjugate base. So after you remove a proton from each of these sites, you have to consider to what extent the negative charge will be stabilized. We can see that these negative charges will be resonance stabilized in some of these cases. This one is not resonance stabilized, so that would be probably our worst candidate to be the most stable anion. But the other four cases all have some resonance stabilization. And since they're rings, we might check to see whether any of them have an additional stabilization due to becoming aromatic. Well, if we look at this three-membered ring, we have two electrons from this carbon lone pair and two electrons from the pi bond to move. That's four. That's not a number of electrons appropriate for aromaticity by the Huckel rule. It's probably not going to gain a great deal of stabilization. If you move six electrons, that is a Huckel number of electrons. But this can't be an aromatic ring no matter how many electrons we move around because you have an sp3 hybridized carbon here that can't make a pi bond in any of the resonance contributors. Finally, you have this large seven-membered ring where you would move two, four, six, eight electrons if you moved as many as you could around the ring. That's not a number to give you aromaticity, even if this was to remain planar. So none of those three will be aromatic. The last example, though, has a lone pair on this carbon, and you can draw resonance contributors where you move those electrons all the way around the ring. You've moved six electrons, just like you would in benzene, and that's aromatic. Because you generate such a stable anion upon deprotonation, such a very stable conjugate base, that initial starting material, the cyclopentadiene, would be the most acidic.